Hi, welcome to Philadelphia's Magic Gardens. Hi. My, <laughs> hi. I'm Warren Muller. This is Warren Muller. This and is Emily Smith. I'm Emily Smith. And we are here today to talk a little bit about Warren's incredible show, On and Off the Wall. Thanks for coming, Warren. Sure. Emily is, by the way, is the director of the Magic Garden. Just and a lowly director. <laughs> the what? The lowly director. That's me. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> she has been bugging me for years to do a show here. I've been uh, friends with Isaiah for about 50 years, and um, I thought it was about time. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, he fought me the whole time. You fought I did, me for years. I, I did, but the, um, the challenge that I had, which I really liked, I realized, was that because Isaiah has mosaics everywhere and my work usually hangs from the ceiling, I had to figure out a different way to approach what I do. And that is to build pieces that were on the wall or on the floor. Um, so this show is called On and Off the Wall. Um, and there are many pieces in here and Everything that I use are, are things that I find. And um, I wanted to say that pretty much what I do is I work to amuse myself. <laughs> and there's no better time than now than to amuse ourselves and distract ourselves from a lot of things. Um, and once I'm in there, working with all these things, I'm in a different world. And um, I collect hundreds, perhaps thousands, of things that are in my studio. And they somehow come together. It's um, a lot of uh, playful uh, action that takes place with my work. And, um, there is no plan, there are no drawings, it's just like... How do you usually start? Like with one object or...? Yeah, I usually start with, let's see, I don't know how this one started, but um, usually I start with one object and then I make a pile of things that I think relate or speak to each other. Um, in this case, I think it was this um, yellow and black sign, it's like a traffic sign. And then I also I had these um, wooden molds that were that I found in a, an old factory. So I think the color kind of um, was the guide, the yellow and the black. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that. I follow. Sometimes it's something that is completely monochrome, so then it would, it would I'd follow maybe the shapes, you know. Here it's the shape and the color. And, um, Where do you usually find your objects? Well, I find them at flea markets. Sometimes people bring me things, um, but I mostly find them at flea markets and junk stores. I find things on the street. Um, and I've been collecting for years. I don't even know what I have. <laughs> it's all in his studio. It's incredible in your space at Badi Badu. And you're going to take me to a, a flea market one day. I yeah. If I wake up early enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Warren, I, you know, knowing a little bit about you, how long have you lived now in Philadelphia? Well, on and off for about 50 plus years. Oh, I came here in the 70s when Philadelphia, when South Street was a whole other world. It was mostly uh, barefoot hippie artists that lived on South Street. I was one of them. Isaiah was one of them. And we all ran into each other and stayed friends over the years. And um, I mean, again, it's, um, Isaiah amuses me just like my work. So <laughs> we stay friends because uh, we keep each other um, laughing um, no matter what. And that is so important for me, given 
the world around me. So I built my own world and um, somehow I'm able to exist in it and um, make some money, sell my work. People like my work. And um, over the years, I've been able to ask for more money. My, uh, one of my mantras is um, add zeros. And <laughs> it's, I have, I've, had, I've added some zeros. When I first started working, when I was in the 70s, I made things that were $2. And then I did things that were twenty dollars, and then two hundred, and two thousand, yeah. and now things, some things are twenty thousand and and up. Um, this is the ongoing rivalry too with you and Isaiah. It's a very playful rivalry that that Isaiah is always jealous that Warren gets paid for his work, and Isaiah never gets paid. He gets paid a little bit, but they're constantly ribbing at each other. I feel like at the dinner table, you're always kind of poking at each other well, for we, more attention and it's yeah. beautiful it's so fun to watch we uh we have a a, a game i'm jealous <laughs> and so if i you know i come in to dinner i live with isaiah and julia for the past uh, five years so i usually have dinner and usually i i would come in and say oh i sold something today for uh, fifteen thousand dollars and right away Isaiah would say, I'm jealous. <laughs> so we have this uh, banter back and forth. Um, and then he sometimes will tell me. Something good. Yeah, yeah so we keep each other um, amused and we, we, we play. Yeah, for sure. We play. When I look at your work, you know, I see this like combination of all these years of dance, ceramics, the drawings, the drag persona. I feel like your work, like you said, has this like kind of energy and you've like landed here in this material for a little while. Can you talk a little bit about how you got to these kinds of objects? Well, I have a degree in photography and filmmaking. And usually in my life, one thing has led to another. Just like in my work, when I find one thing and it leads to another. So I was a I was a photographer and a filmmaker, and then I um, became a dancer. I made a film about a dance company, and I was so intrigued about what I was seeing that I started taking classes with this dance company, and I became a dancer in this company. Totally unexpected, unplanned. Everything I do is kind of unplanned, but I'm, I kind of go with where I feel things are leading me. So I think in my work, there's a lot of movement going on, and I think that is because I have that in my body from dancing for so many years. So, um, and, um, and then I had, uh, uh, what else did I do, Emily? I... Ceramics, you've done, um, I mean, you've done drawings and paintings and, I mean, Patsy Ratchet comes into play, I feel. I, I, have, I have a drag persona, which does not exist anymore. Oh, you say that every time. <laughs> I always say that. Well, Pat, Patsy's come in and out of retirement many yeah. times. But it's, uh, um, so I, I was a singer also. I, I, as, as a drag queen, I sing, I sing live. Um, so there is a lot of movement and playfulness and colorful and um, the theatricality. It's all, it's all in here without me realizing it, without planning it. You know, you, I became the product of everything that came before me. So there was really no plan to be this artist, but here I am, and I'm not, I guess I'm not done yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Still here. No, not even COVID can stop you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, COVID. I know, we're here. Well, maybe so we should. You're probably all wondering what my math looks like, but. <laughs> He's very handsome under there. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should take a, a pause and we can go into the back gallery together.
So this particular piece has no color in it. Um, so it relies mostly on the dynamics of the shapes of things that go in it. I mean, when I use color, the color is in play, but here it's, um, the objects are in play. And there's, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a wheel that's turning here, a glass wheel. What's, what are these, oh. is this like a kitchen utensil? Uh, I, think, I think it's a strainer, you know, from straining uh, food and letting the liquid go through. So, I mean, a lot of times I don't know what things are. I just like the shape. I mean, this here is a, um, something to hold a Christmas tree. But you, lose, you kind of lose the original intent, which is, um, makes it more interesting. Sometimes you, you notice things that are there, but sometimes not. Um, and that's the whole idea of giving all these objects a new life. So they're no longer what they were. Um, they are, they've become what they are in the presence of their company. So, I love that. That's very poetic. Yeah, I mean, when I'm with Emily, I become somebody else. Much more Be beautiful and intelligent, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Did you learn how to do all the electrical work yourself? Yeah, it's just, um, I, um, I figure things out. Did you or, shock yourself a million times? No. <laughs> you know, if I, if, I need, if I don't know how to do something, I'll ask an expert, somebody who really knows. Well, that's very smart. So the electrical thing, you know, it's two wires. It's, um, when you know how to do it, it's really simple. Yeah. So, and then they all join together in a junction box, which is in there. It's hidden. Um, now, what do you call these pieces? Like, sometimes I call them luminary pieces, sometimes I call them chandeliers. I, I don't feel like I have the right word for these pieces. What do you, yeah. how do you describe them? Well, I mostly, because most of my pieces, um, excuse me, <laughs> have been hanging, I call them chandeliers. Now, they're not what people usually think of when they think of a chandelier, but I actually like calling it what people commonly think of as something other than what these are. Now that these are not hanging, I guess they're um, sculptures. What would you say? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're definitely sculptures, but they have such a different sort of interactive component to them. And they look like they belong in someone's living room, you know, but mm -hmm. not in like a, a kitschy kind of way. Like they're real pieces that mm -hmm. blow your mind, but that like you live around at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're they're meant well. Part of my I have a gallery, and um, where I work, make these things, and part of my um, philosophy is that art is for living. So my studio has my workspace, but also it has a kind of a living room kind of feel. So things are on the wall, complementing furniture. And my partner, um, R.J. Thornburg, he's an interior designer. So he kind of creates a setting for my work. And um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like R.J. like fills out the vision, or like he starts with your pieces and then sort of expands upon them. Yeah, I usually pieces. don't show my work in galleries. Um, I'm not that interested in white walls and a kind of stark um, feel. I really like uh, the warmth that I bring to my work. And I think people feel that. People feel um, they're warm, they're, they're welcoming. Yeah. yeah, and you painted our walls black. <laughs> <laughs> but the black looks great. I mean, it's so sleek yeah. and sexy almost. I yeah, I wore like a black shirt for today. I mean, very, very sleek and sexy. Yeah, this is really the first time that we've been even able to do this kind of show. It's, it's such an incredible 
uh, transformative exhibition for us, and I, people have really been responding to the way that the light makes them feel. You know, mm -hmm. it, it creates this whole other environment within an environment, and I, I find it so fascinating that light is so capable of doing that, and, yeah. and how that play is... Well, I, in Isaiah's work, which is all around me, that has, you know, plays with light too, with all the, with all the mirrors. So that kind of relates to what I'm doing. And, um, by the way, the one thing, Isaiah has been my friend for 50 years, and the one thing that I learned from him, which most people don't go for this, but it's, um, he learned, he taught me about chaos and dealing with chaos. And um, it's very challenging to put things in order, but I've learned to do it in a playful way. You know, I play, I have fun, I have a good time. And that's what Isaiah does too. And uh, that's why I think we're such good friends. Yeah. Yeah. And then Julia's laughing along with you. you. She is, yeah. <laughs> we, we have a good time and um, we love to be in each other's presence. It's really um, a joy to be with my two friends from decades, decades and decades. I mean, I don't have any other friends like that, really. And not many people do. Yeah. I'm really fortunate to have such wonderful people in my life. So. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see, I'm actually, I'm smiling. I'm yeah, sure he's, he's getting a little weepy over here. I have here. a great smile. But... <laughs> well, do you want to move on to another piece? Sure. Okay, yeah. let's do it. I decided to show these uh, drawings, which I did in the 1980s. And they all, all of these drawings come from uh, performances that I did um, in San Francisco and New York. And um, a lot of these come from a persona I did, um, which at the time was called Miss Piss. And, um, most of these are some, some way Miss Piss. Um, and they have a lot of movement in them, which I, I did them really quickly. I, did, I, I do my drawings um, kind of like um, Chinese brush painting, where I just, I go, there's no corrections. Um, so like it, this one is even in, I was in a kimono there. Um, and this is, this is uh, me on stage. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is, a, this is a rare occasion where I bring my drawings out. I don't, um, don't show them very often. How many, there was like, you gave us dozen to pick from. I mean, how many were in this series? There was like a lot, a lot of pieces. I don't know. I, I ha it was, it, they happened over years, so. Um, there were, you know, 50 or 100 drawings, and actually, I've I've given a lot, given them a lot of them away, or um, I've sold some. So um, this is partly what's left of um, of a time in the 1980s, where maybe these are precursors to what I'm doing now. Maybe this is how. Who knows how things become what and who they are? I don't know. So, uh. yeah, that's what is it about my work that kept you pursuing me for so many years? <laughs> like what attracts, relentlessly? <laughs> what attracts um, you to what I do? Why does it belong here? That's a, you know, so for me, I learned about your work before I was close with the Zagars, even before I worked here so intimately. And you have this incredible piece in the Philadelphia building that's so enormous and amazing. And every time I would come out of the elevator, I would just like stare at it. It was so uh, unlike any other work I had really experienced before. 
in that way, it was again, like very transformative. And I think I'm attracted to these kinds of altered environments. Uh, and I've always been interested in um, obviously places like this. And uh, as I was here more and more, your work is throughout the space. The, there's pieces here that are very early on, Warren's, and then you hung the chandelier under the huppa. Remember that day mm -hmm. with all of the chains and the lifting and we were like, that thing is gonna fall and kill someone and it has not fallen and hurt anyone <laughs> at all. No, 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 I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> no, no one's killed yeah, yet. 50 years. And I, you know, and then I was like, you know, totally enraptured by that piece. And then slowly, you know, you were working in Watkins Street and I feel like your work elevates Isaiah's work. And so I'm here with Isaiah's work every day, but your work brings it to this whole other level. And, you know, I think even particularly having dinners with the Zagars and you, with your chandelier over us, it just, it's like you said, it creates this warmth and this joy. And there's things, you know, art is not necessarily meant to live amongst us in that way, but your pieces really are. So I really love that about your work. And for years, I was like, make small pieces, which is impossible for yeah. Warren. It's very difficult. And you kept saying, no, no, go away, leave me alone. And I finally just was like, just get it done. Why not? Just try. And, and here we are. And I think the work has been, like you said, that challenge, I feel like you really rose to it. And I think um, it really exceeded what I had even envisioned for, for the whole show. So good job. You did great. <laughs> my, work, my work lives in a lot of uh, public spaces like in restaurants. In this building, Emily was talking about the Philadelphia building. It's a giant skyscraper and the owner of the building, had, the building was filled with um, chandeliers that were your typical brass chandelier. And he was very um, adventurous. And he said, take all these chandeliers and make them, make them into something fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, I don't know, 30 feet long and it hung way up in the air. Um, and I do that. I have made uh, pieces for movie theaters and restaurants, people's homes, um, and they usually become centerpieces and, and they light up the space, you know, with that, with that theatrical kind of glow that I'm very interested in. Yeah, there's definitely some like theatricality. I definitely feel like that's something I'm drawn to yeah. in your work. It's, um, and the, there's like so much humor in the work too. Like I feel like you're kind of like, you know, nudging us a little bit and giving us a little wink. Well, I have a book that I put together and it is called Wink, <laughs> which is, um, I always think of a wink as taking somebody into your confidence, you know? And I feel like I'm, the humor that I exude in these things, I think, you know, it's a, pri it's a private thing that people experience when they're with my work. It makes them smile. I've kind of, my whole life, I've been trying to be optimistic in spite of how, where I find myself and who I find myself around and the situation. And um, I mean, now is a really challenging time to be optimistic, but as long as I keep working, I feel like um, my work makes me happy and it makes other people happy too. So it, it goes on. Yeah, you succeed. That, I mean, this is part of the bowling pin. These rubber rings, I don't, I don't really know why that rubber ring, but I have the whole set and they all have these rubber rings. It's a different game than bowling alley things. You know, like I said, I, I don't know about a lot of things, you know, like where they come from or what use, what use they've had, but all I know is they're, they're useful to me and they, they're just right. And, um, this, this, as you're moving, can you see how the reflection in these little oh, crystals yeah. go? Yeah, this was a closed ring and I cut it and, and torqued it so that it had movement. 
I mean, this piece is very, it moves, for me, moves a lot. I mean, I feel like I want to go in there and be in there, but... Yeah, live but inside it, of live it. Live in there. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to live in there? Yeah. <laughs> outside, the birds do. Yeah. The bird, every year we have birds in your chandelier outside. Yeah, I have that. I have some outside, an outside piece at my studio, and there are many nests that go in there. And Actually, it keeps the birds warm in the winter because it's it's on it's on. Yeah. This is a great one. I like this piece a lot. This piece has a lot of the toys. There's. Did you notice how much they have so many toys in this this piece? You got this shark. You got the roller skate. The roller. What are those roller skates? Yeah. And then the the toy yeah, over it, there. The little the teddy bear. There's this ship. Was that something that you were doing consciously, or? Um, well, I've, I've had um, a collection of toys. And one day I just opened, the, they were all in a suitcase. And I opened the suitcase and I, I just thought, well, let's use these. I've had them for years. So, the, um, Actual, the beginning of this piece is a, a leg, which you'll see around the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this piece is called Leg Up. And um, the flea market that I go to, it was um, something that nobody would buy except me. And it was a, an artificial leg. It must have weighed, I don't know how this woman moved around with it, but it probably weighed like 30 pounds. It was made out of wood and it had a, a jointed knee to it. And so I bought it and that was the beginning of, of this piece. And when we go around the other side, you'll see it. Yeah. So here's the leg. Um, and, um, and she, uh, she, um, and it has a, a, it locks in. I'm not, I'm not going to push it up all the way. But, and it came with the shoe, you know, it, um, strapped onto someone's hip. Um, and then there's also um, one of my shipwrecks. I, I collect old ships that really nobody wants because they look like they've been in a wreck. <laughs> so I, um, I, I really love them. I love that they're falling apart, and but they're moving still, and I don't know. I, they're alive. They're between um, being alive and being at the end of their lives. They stopped. They're in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things, Warren, I was thinking about today, earlier today, was we were at dinner once at the Zagar's house and we were with this young poet, you remember this dinner? And he was really unsure of himself. He was like in his early 20s. And he just was like, I don't know how to like break out of my life and be a creative person. And you gave him this beautiful little speech about how a creative life is possible. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> Go but on. It was, it was so interesting for me as a young creative person um, who was slightly older than him, but in my field still, and then looking at you and Julia and Isaiah, who are in your older years, older than I am, and, and to be telling this young person who often you don't hear this, which is you can actually make a wonderful life by being a creative person. And I feel like what you were saying was my whole life has been sort of this struggle, but it was incredible, like that you always were able to be creative. It's still a struggle, even though it looks like I, you know, I just throw it together. <laughs> it, yeah. But um, it's hard sometimes. Sometimes I have to walk away from it and let it just be. But um, I, I do like to uh, inspire younger people because there's really no way to teach anybody to be who they are as an artist. It, it's about jumping in and swimming. And um, 
So the thing that I try to communicate is um, to uh, just go for it and um, see what happens. Mm. And I know that I've been inspired by Isaiah without someone who keeps saying, yeah, go for it, don't, don't worry about where it's going to uh, end up. Um, there's a lot of freedom. And, uh, I don't know, I see that in your work. I yeah. think it's really wonderful. And it's a really wonderful thing about you as a person, too. Mm -hmm. So Debbie wanted to know what object you were most excited about finding to include in one of your pieces. Well, actually, all of them. Like, everything I find, I, I pick them because I like them for some unknown reason. I really don't know why. It's like when you meet somebody, there's something about them that you kind of like and engage with. So I have a dialogue with um, objects and I pick them. Yeah, it might have been the leg. Um, <laughs> that leg was crying out to be alive again. I don't know how, how many years it was laying somewhere, um, but all these uh, pieces are together because they are happy to be together, because I put them together. I'm a good matchmaker. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and then our other visitor question was, Kathleen wanted to know where else we can see your work besides here and at your studio. I know you mentioned a few places here in Philly, but are there other Please, Philly, um, yeah, where do you hang stuff? There, in my studio, there's a lot of work that hangs, but I have a lot of my work in New York. You know, I have a few fans that buy my work ongoingly, and there are two women who own a bunch of restaurants in New York, and they have one in Paris and one in Tokyo. So they commissioned me to make one for this uh, restaurant in Tokyo. Um, so, and there's, um, you can see a big piece of mine that's about, I think, 26 feet tall, and it's in the lobby of a theater in, uh, in Connecticut. And it, it goes from, well, over my head. It goes up three floors, three stories. You had just been, right before COVID, working towards a commission piece in Mexico, in Mexico City. Oh, that's right. It's the same. Would have been great. <laughs> the same two women from New York, uh, Jody and Rita. I, they, um, they were working on a restaurant in, in Mexico. And boy, did I really want to go there and do that. But it's on hold, like everything else right now. You'll get back there. So, yeah. art takes me different places. I um, made work that's in all around the country, actually, and um, like someone I made a piece for in uh, in the West Coast. She owned a factory in the Philippines, so I was able to go there just because we um, hit it off. So. I was in the Philippines for a few weeks after I left Tokyo. So, yeah, my work takes me many places. Yeah. Yeah, always surprising. So, there's a life to it somehow. I give it life and it gives me, gives, gives it back. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, a, a writer who, um, he writes books, but he also writes for the New York Times. And he um, was really interested in my work, and he spent a weekend with me. I have a house in the country, and he spent a weekend with me, and um, we went to the flea market together. And he, uh, I, I focused on um, these calipers, and what he wrote uh, was that these calipers were waiting for me 
for years and the calipers said to itself, I always wanted to be an artist. And so I looked at it and I heard it and I took it and it became part of what I do. And um, things aren't what they appear to be. <laughs> You know, Warren, thank you so much for being here with us. It's always just such a pleasure. Just love you. Oh, for me too. Yeah, I'm so glad that you did this show, that I harassed you to to be a part of this exhibition. Yeah. I, I wish that we hadn't gotten COVID, you know, turned around, but the show is, it's up until the end of October and it's wonderful here. We're, we've really lowered um, the capacity here. So it feels very safe and very quiet and it's a really great place to come right now to get away and find some joy. Obviously these pieces are, are so whimsical and colorful and they can really transport you to another place. So time to come see them and thank you so much. Thank you so much Warren. You're welcome. Love you. What a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>